wine always helps. I thank you for it. Trial by combat. Deciding a man's guilt or innocence in the eyes of the gods by having two other men hack each other to pieces tells you something about the gods. How much longer? So. You think Oberyn has a chance? Red Viper of Dawn. You don't get a name like that unless you're deadly, right? Never seen him fight. Oh, he's going to die. I'm going to die. Oberyn believes in himself. That's putting it mildly. What's the punishment for regicide? Drawing and quartering? Hanging? Breaking at the wheel? Beheading. Seems rather ordinary. And he was my nephew as well. So what is that? Fratricide is brothers. Mm. Filicide is sons. Nepoticide, that's the one. Matricide, patricide, infanticide, suicide. There's no kind of killing that doesn't have its own word. Cousins. Cousins. You're right. There is no word for cousin killing. Well done. Do you remember cousin Orson? Orson Lannister? Of course. Wet nurse dropped him on his head and left him simple. Simple? Used to sit all day in the garden crushing beetles with a rock. <laughs> Nothing made him happier. Nothing made you happier. You'd think being tormented from birth would have given you some affinity for the afflicted. On the contrary, laughing at another person's misery was the only thing that made me feel like everyone else. The joke wore thin, though. For you, you drifted away. I had other interests. Yes, other interests. But I stayed with Olsen. Why? I was curious. Why was he smashing all those beetles? What did he get out of it? First thing I did was ask him. Olsen, why are you smashing all those beetles? He gave me an answer. Smash the beetles! Smash them! Go, go, go! I wasn't deterred. I was the smartest person I knew, certainly I had the wherewithal to unravel the mysteries that lay at the heart of a moron. So, I went to Maester Valeric's library. Valeric? Try to touch me once. Turns out, far too much has been written about great men, and not nearly enough about morons. Doesn't seem right. In any case, I found nothing that illuminated the nature of Orson's affliction, or the reason behind his relentless beetle slaughter. So, I went back to the source. I may not have been able to speak with Orson, but I could observe him, watch him, the way... Men watch animals to come to a deeper understanding of their behavior. And as I watched, I became more and more sure of it. There was something happening there. His face was like the page of a book written in a language I didn't understand, but he wasn't mindless. He had his reasons. And I became possessed with knowing what they were. I began to spend inordinate amounts of time watching him. I would eat my lunch in the garden, chewing my mutton to the music of coo, coo, coo. When I wasn't watching him, I was thinking about him. Father droned on about the family legacy, and I thought about Orson's Beatles. I read the histories of Targaryen conquest. Did I hear dragon wings? No, I heard coo, coo, coo. And I still couldn't figure out why he was doing it, and I had to know, because it was horrible that all these beetles should be dying for no reason. Every day around the world, men, women, and children are murdered by the score. Who gives a dusty fuck about a bunch of beetles? I know, I know, but still, it filled me with dread. Piles and piles of them, years and years of them. How many countless living, crawling things smashed and dried out and returned to the dirt? In my dreams, I found myself standing on a beach made of beetle husks, stretching as far as the eye could see. I woke up crying, weeping for their shattered little bodies. I tried to stop Olsen once. He was twice your size. Until that mule kicked him in the chest and killed him.
was it all about?